Welcome to the second of the four Hooverville 6 interviews made available to the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. I'd like to thank Steve and everyone at Hooverville for making this a possibility. Today's interview is with Michael Troughton, Derek Sherwin and Deborah Watling. Enjoy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've got your second panel for you. Slight change of tone now. Um, the Farrell Project Rats, along with the Little Tinder Dog, um, are going to be inter- uh, interviewing Mr. Derek Sherwin, um, producer for Brown and Murphy, the wonderful Miss Debbie Watling, making her way to the stage. And at some stage and somewhere, Michael Trapp is his there he is. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. And the clock starts now. Yeah, let's... Chris, move up. Move up. I'm moving. I'm moving. Here we go. This is, ba- this is basically going to be the tone for the rest of the interview. I must warn you now. <laughs> what, waffling? Oh, yes. yes. What, we do a lot of waffling, yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Wattling. What? 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 <laughs> Hello. 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 Wattling. Hello. Wattling. Um, um, Etc. Michael, take charge. Go yeah. on. Sort them. I have no choice but to take charge. Can I just complain that, well, that green you thing. never buy any yeah. drinks? In the movies. I'll I'll buy you a drink. I was a university with you for three years and I never got any drinks. Well, do you think we should talk to the real yes. people? Yes. Yes. All right, right then. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Oh, that's a menacing there. Um, right, well, uh, I'm Michael from the Tin Dog Podcast, and these two gentlemen... Thank you. Are, yes. ...are from... Uh, yeah, I'm Mr. Paul, and this is Mr. Chris, I'm from the Varos Project. Right. But we're not important. The important people are at the other end of the stage, and they are... And we have one microphone, so if I can pass this along, that would be very nice. Thank you. They are Derek yeah? Sherwin, <laughs> uh, ex-producer, writer, stand-in, stuntman, God knows what a doctor who, years ago, before you were well, probably born, um, you have the privilege of talking to the oldest, in fact, I think the oldest living producer of Doctor Who, and writer, everything for my sins. Anyway, I'll ask you along to just uh, everybody else. Hello, I'm Peter Davison. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Michael Trouton. Um, I was born in 1947. And uh, I am the fortunate son of Patrick, who is the best doctor, in my opinion. Yes. Yeah. Hello. I'm Rosie Wendy Padbury. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm in the wrong interview. <laughs> <laughs> You've changed, <laughs> Wendy, you've changed a lot. <laughs> uh, so actually, Deborah Watling, and I played Victoria Waterhill, I think you all know, and actress, that's it. <laughs> is it possible? Yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. shall I be microphone on? You've been gone, then. You only got one, it's a cheap show, isn't it? lapel mics, they said no. <laughs> anyway. You give the lapel mics to the cat, to the actual stars. Oh. <laughs> and then give them a, a microphone. Anyway, Mr. Hall, would you, be, would you do the honours? Oh, great, thank you very much. <laughs> um, I'm going to start by asking Michael, actually, uh, a question. But it, I'm going to start on a sad time, everyone, sorry. <laughs> uh, you obviously were in the new statesman. Yes. Um, we were all... Very, very sad to hear it the sudden demise of It was devastating news, wasn't um, it? It really what, was. Yeah. What is the, what is your best Rick Mail story that you can actually tell in public? <laughs> <laughs> or even the best one you can't tell in public. <laughs> we, we won't tell anyone. Um, yeah. Uh, I think it was probably in the last series. Um, in Belgium, I think we were. Uh, in Brussels. And he, and possibly me, were very, very drunk. And uh, we'd been, we'd had a last night, um, and we wandered into the the red light district by mistake. I think. <laughs> wandered. <laughs> it wasn't. We were there by mistake, and 
Rick was in one of those movies where he was saying yes to everything, you know, and this guy came up, you know, no, no, I'm just, just waiting, waiting, you know, that kind of guy, <laughs> only, you know, in, in, in Belgium, and um, uh, we were dragged inside this really seedy joint, and I sobered up almost instantaneously, but Rick didn't, and he was like, yeah, come on, and there were, you know, ladies coming out saying, yeah, would you like to buy a bottle of champagne for £150, you know, that kind of thing. Um, that was the most dangerous time I've had, I think, with really. Rick. Um, I think probably the funniest moment was um, during one of the episodes where we were filming um, me being hit with a fish. And I'm not kidding you, when I say a fish, it was like, it was a huge, I think it was a salmon. And uh, we were, everybody was discussing how it should be done, you know, like, oh, how are you going to do this so it doesn't hurt? And I said, and eventually, Rick just said, look, let's just do it. And I'm not kidding you, he literally took the fish and he whacked it across the back of my head. And I, I, I could see stars, but it was the funniest moment ever on, on screen. It was brilliant. I suppose the other time is um, when they set, he set fire to my bum and I was pushed through a glass window, which was great fun. But yeah, he's going to be sorely, sorely missed. He really is. And uh, he's died too soon, far too soon. Deborah. How did he set fire to your bum? <laughs> this man came along and he put a pair of racing driver knickers on, you know, the, the fireproof ones, and then a metal plate yeah. on my bum, and then he covered it with what's known as cow gum, which is like this petroleum jelly glue, and just set fire to it. <laughs> and when we tried it in the rehearsals, it was this tiny little flame. I said, yeah, that's fine, that's no problem. But actually, during the take, Obviously, Rick said, come on, whack it on, whack it on, whack it on. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I could feel the flames going up, right up the back of my neck. It was really terrifying. And, the, you know, the firemen, you know what they're like. You know, the, the shot was just instantaneously over. And he rushed in and shot me with this, you know, this um, fire extinguisher. But that was, they were good times. I'm going to sorely miss him. Talking about uh, the new statesman, did your teddy bear have a stunt double? I was very worried about that. You the stunt double is sitting in my workshop, actually. There were five made. Uh, they did four takes. And this wonderful prop guy says, you've got to keep this. And he, he put it into my bag. And he's, yeah, he's sitting, uh, my lovely teddy's actually sitting in my workshop on the roof. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, there is one left. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I did worry. Yeah. You know, oh, what a great scene that was. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, we, we don't need one. We we'll just pass it. Oh, 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 you get to keep yeah, it. I'll, I'll just have the bellow at you. I'll do it for the dice guys. You know. Oh, oh, as Deborah has the microphone. Yeah, um, oh yes. Yeah. Oh, shall I ask this one? Yes. Yeah, oh, actually, written down. Like. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll write it down on 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 paper and everything. On, on, yeah. Yeah, oh, wow. In in ink. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> so Deborah. Yes. Um. So. The only stories that of yours that you filmed in Doctor Who in their, that exist in their entirety are a tomb of the Cybermen and uh, Enemy of the World. Uh, how, having uh, only those two be the ones that exist uh, in their entirety, what was it like working on Dimensions of Time? <laughs> Refresh my memory. <laughs> that, that was the one where he was uh, in Albert Square. That's and right. was the, I know this one with yeah. John Pertwee. With, with John Pertwee, yes. Yes, yes. There's a story behind that. Oh, please, yeah, yeah, please yeah, tell. Yeah, I'll make did, it very quick. Oh, oh. Did, um, did, uh, how long have we got? Um, We've got long enough. Right. Oh, smart. I was doing um, a convention in Harrisburg, the Novotel, and in four days' time I was going to do Dimensions. So I stayed with my sister Dillis in Brixton, and she had a young boy there, her son, and it was his birthday, and he got a pair of Blades, not roller skates. Roller, roller blades, yeah. Thank you, roller blades. And as I say, it was his birthday, and he got them and said, Oh, aren't you, Debbie? Look at these, aren't they great? And I said, Yeah, they look really good. And he went, Do you want to go? <laughs> and I went, Yeah, why not? So I found myself going down Bristol Hill in these blades. Little did I know there was a snub in the pavement, slightly rising like that, and I hit it. I went over and fell on the arm Ooh. and broke it. No, no. And I thought my immediate reaction was, in four days' time, I've got to do dimensions. And of course, I'll be a pastor. Anyway, 
I got to the set. It was a Cathy Sark. Great. And um, John was there and said hello. I said, yes, can I have um, a, ward a word with the wardrobe, please? He, they went, yes, yes, yes. And I said, um, <clears throat> right. And they said, oh, we got your lovely Victorian frog. It's going to be great. I said, yes, thanks. I need a Victorian shawl or a cape. And they said, what for? And I went, this. And they went, oh, no. So I had this cape around me. That's what happened. I said, I can't, you know. They went, okay, right. The camera won't see it. So John Nathan Turner came up and said, are you all right, dear? And I said, yeah, I'm fine, fine. Don't worry about it. I said, but I really am a bit dodgy at the moment because of the arm. Um, I don't really want to move far. And he said, oh, don't worry. You won't have to have to do a lot. And I said, oh, great. I said, what am I going to do? He said, well, you see that ladder going outside the cutty cell? <laughs> I went, yes. And it was sort of drizzling with rain. He said, you've got to go up there with John, and then the deck, which is slippery, run around it twice like that. I said, are you joking? <laughs> he said, no, I'm not, actually. He said, you're an actress, you can do it, Debs, can't you? So I went, yes, thanks a lot. And I did. <laughs> 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 uh, who was that? Derek. We're in the you so far, I do apologise. Thank now, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's your turn now, so. Now, <clears throat> Terry Dix, he's essentially credited you with the creation of the Time Lords. Yes. Uh, we were wondering, how did you feel when, in the new series, uh, they've effectively removed the Time Lords from Doctor Who? So they're, they're, they're out there somewhere, they're not really part of the story anymore. Well, they were never really part of the story. They came at the end of the uh, Star Wars. Star Wars? No, that's Star Wars. War Games. War Games. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, preempting. Sounds like a good one. Uh, yeah, quite. Yeah. And uh, they were there simply as part of the exercise of removing one who and replacing him with another. And they, everybody said, well, how are we going to do that? And I said, well, we, people who, we get hold of people who, who bumped him from his own place before, and they're called... Uh, so, uh, no, they're called, um... Time Lords? Huh? Time Lords? Sorry? Ta time Lords? Yes, Time Lords. Well, you knew it later. I knew it later. <laughs> 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 no, well, some of you plucked out of the air <laughs> to end the But did you uh, come story. up with the, the actual yes, name? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. You are the inventor. I'm the inventor. Oh. I was the inventor of Unit, but that didn't make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that, does that answer your question? Oh yeah, I was, I was wondering, um, did, you, did you call them the Time Lords because you already had the Warlords in the War Games? They thought, oh, Warlords, Time Lords? No, 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 Co 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 just a coincidence of the names. Ah. Uh, time Lords obviously was to do with the fact that he was a time traveller, and these were the, the Lords, the Masters, if you like, of time, from Gallifrey, and uh, he's, he, he's, he was a lot that he had a body with in, in Gallifrey before he buckled up in the towers. Yeah. I was what? Now, has you got the mic anyway? Oh, oh, oh. oh. And, and now I have the mic. I have the power. <laughs> Just ask the question. <laughs> Just ask the question. Oh, oh thank you. It keeps me on track. It keeps me honest, man. Right. So you, you, um, basically you read, 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 read. I've had a couple already. It's been a, a bit of a long day. Right. Uh, you, Arguably rebooted the Doctor Who back in uh, series seven. Thank you. That's all right. Keep me on train. So, what did you think of the one of the new reboot of uh, Doctor Who when it came back? What's your, what's your professional opinion of what Russell T Davies and later what Stephen Moffat has have been up to? I haven't seen it a lot because I've been living in Thailand for thirteen years. Oh. <laughs> what's it like? <laughs> Damn sight better than here. <laughs> Does it rain as much? No, but when it rains, it rains. You get it opens up. Do, do, but at one side of the street is fine. You walk across the other end of the street is different. It's it's that peculiar. But it's a it's a the monsoon is is quite an extraordinary thing because it's it bursts of horrendous downpours of rain for a hundred yards. Another hundred yards of sunshine. It's oh. weird. It's weird. But uh, no, it's, it's, it, here it's miserable, there it's fun. Ah, fun rain. Fun rain, yeah. And you've got to walk along without your shirt on or your knickers or whatever, you know, because it's, it's warm. 
Oh, my. Here yeah, is horrendous. So, Thailand next year? Yeah, I think so. Cool. Don't bring your knickers. Yeah, you need to go by. But what are you saying? What did you think? Of the of Doctor Who, I mean. Not of the knickers. No, no, no. no. Can't, don't don't look at me. Can we keep this clean? <laughs> what did I think of Doctor Who? What did you think of New yeah. Doctor Who? Yeah, yeah well, please. Uh, difficult to say because I came back, as I say, only two years ago. Um, and I didn't get invited to the 50 year anniversary, oh. which really pissed me off somewhere, um, since I'm one of the ugliest people in the world um, on Doctor Who. Um, but what I think of the new lot, um, it's difficult to say. Uh, I've got so much contention with the way it's put together nowadays. It seems to be a, um, a favourite for overgrown schoolboys with little intelligence, but they're pretending to be very clever intellectually, and it's bullshit. Oh. <laughs> if you'll figure that race, do you think goes on? Um, now, what other thing you I haven't seen a lot. Uh, this is the newest one I, I didn't even see last week, so I missed it for some strange reason. But I've seen bits and pieces of clips in between. Um, I don't know about the new Doctor Who himself. I've seen him several times on television being interviewed and so on. Um, the little bit I've caught, I've been surprised that he doesn't have much of a sense of humour. Um, I find it very really difficult to find empathy with him. How difficult it's going to be as a story is developed and his character develops, I have no idea. But it didn't strike me as something I've got to watch. Oh. Which uh, I, I, I used to feel that mostly about others, uh, apart from one or two of the people who played Doctor Who I didn't like. But um, I. Name them. <laughs> if you like. <laughs> what we like. <laughs> Uh, well, the ones I couldn't get on with, basically, was who's the little guy who thought he was funny all the time? <laughs> Go on, you must recognise him. <laughs> Sylvester Mello, that's right. Mello? Mello, whatever his damn name was. Like the two. Yeah, see, I didn't find him acceptable as a Doctor Who. Nah. You know, he it wasn't. Doctor Who is supposed to be um, intelligent, for one thing. Uh, super intelligent. But I didn't feel that Mr. McCoy could convey that to me as a, one of the audience. Um, I don't think I could have written it for him either. Uh, others? I don't know. He's the one that stuck in my mind as being uh, not Doctor Who. The best ones, I think, were... Uh, he had the most difficult time was... Um, your dad? Yeah. Yeah. Here, here. He, he, had, he had a very difficult time. He's written in the middle of a uh, difficult time in scripts. Yeah. He was always objecting quite rightly because they were crap. And uh, the one I really liked was the guy I'm afraid I brought into place and was, was John Bertrand. Yeah. As John and I clicked for some reason. He wanted to play without comedy. He wanted to shrug us his, his comedy uh, uh, history, if you like, you wanted to be a real actor, and so uh, it was difficult to to get him to play straight scenes, but he did quite well, and very often they turned out to be funny. <laughs> yeah, but that was the nature of the guy. He was very good. I mean, I liked him very much. Um, but I don't think there were any uh, more I disliked, and I didn't see all of them, of course, because. Even though I was living in Thailand, I got the eight episodes sent over to me on DVD. So they updated me quite a lot. But then they were taking notice of me, not now. <laughs> they don't care what I think of now. I don't think I, they think I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> they could be quite right. <laughs> Boots are dropping up all over the place all the time. He's still alive. <laughs> but uh, what was your question? <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so you just want me to go rabbity on, do you? <laughs> well, should we, should we give someone else a... Well, oh, just oh, he's got a question. A question for you all, really. Um, considering there's so little of Patrick Troughton's actual time as a Doctor left in existence now, why do you think he's so beloved still by the fans? I mean, he, personally, he's my favourite Doctor. and mm. I haven't seen a lot of him, but the guy just... He is the doctor to me. It's funny you say that yeah. because, um, you know, a lot of the time uh, you go to these sorts of conventions, it's, it's not just people over the age of 50. 
coming up and saying, you know, I used to put the pillow up and he was so wonderful. It's a whole range of ages, mm. especially the young kids that come up and say, I've rediscovered Doctor Who because <coughs> I love it so much and I just think your dad was so good and the stories were so good. Um, I think the strength of dad was that he, he was a really experienced, good character actor. Yeah. And I think that, in essence, is why he was so good. He played it for real. Yeah. He played it for real with this cheeky little sort of undercurrent, as you were saying, of humour behind it. And I, I think that's why he was so successful. Mm. Yeah. Has the reaction changed since the discovery of the stories and your book? Um, yeah, nothing's changed, no. It's enhanced uh, everything, I think. You know, the, I mean, they were wonderful discoveries. We, we went off to see the, you know, the premiere of them. And it was, it was weird, actually, watching him, especially without, you know, the quality that you normally see. Um, it was so well digitised. Uh, it was quite moving, actually. It was, you know, it was really nice to see, you know, him doing his thing. And, you know, it wasn't just Doctor Who either. He had such a huge range. You know, at the moment I'm sort of going through a whole load of his, uh, his stuff, uh, trying to sort of categorise what he did. And the amount of work that he did, especially during the 50s, yeah. when television was just beginning, um, is enormous, you know. It was the days where you could just knock on the door and say, well, you got any, you know, um, you know to a director and say, well, you've got any work this week, you know. And, and, and that was the way it worked. It was like a little sort of rep. TV in those days you got 50 bob for it. Well, quite, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, didn't get me. You really had to save up to be an actor. Yeah, yeah. So is this research going to be the basis for a second book? Yeah, I'm doing an encyclopedia of, right. of his work, a colour encyclopedia. Oh, wow. um, and uh, recently, Dave and I have discovered uh, three more huge boxes, which actually, after this show, I'm going to go and pick up, uh, of his... Um, you know, letters and lots and lots of stuff, um, which is going to enhance it. Um, it was weird because David was phoned up by his agent and somebody had moved into his flat in Ham in London and discovered these three boxes just sitting in the attic of his old flat. And no one since his death had actually, you know, I mean, I suppose whoever goes in the attic, I don't. Um, but they were just sitting there and uh, the guy handing them over to his agent, David collected them. And he said, Mike, you've got to look at this stuff because this is just gold dust. I mean, it's got the most fantastic pictures and loads and loads of information. So um, I'm hoping to, you know, um, try and get some of that out as well. Really. But, uh, How far did the boxes go back, date one? They go all the way back to the 50s. Um, and it's interesting because when I was doing the book, this wonderful guy contacted me and said he <laughs> bought all these... Um, they're sort of, I suppose they're sort of picture book type things, that, scrapbooks really, that he'd stuck all his um, shows in. And uh, a lot of the shows aren't on IMB, you know, the, the, the internet site. Um, and there was a lot of them missing. So I'm hoping that uh, these little sort of books that he kept are going to stretch from sort of 60s onwards until whenever he stopped. But um, well, I've yet to see it yet. I can't wait. Very exciting. When's it going to come out then? A book, um, probably yeah. due to <laughs> work commitments, um, probably the um, beginning of next year oh, at some great. point. The encyclopedia, yeah. I've got to do an awful lot of research on uh, releasing pictures and, you know, yeah. talking to people and saying, you know, can I use this picture and all that kind of stuff. Because it being an encyclopedia, it's, you know, a bit like a Dawning Kinsley, you know, you've got, a, you've got the date, you've got the, the, the show. It's on the site. Um, so. Have, have you got a title we can look up on Amazon yet? Have I what? A title? Yes. yes. It is. It's at the printers. Oh. Yeah, the hardback version of the, um, of the Patrick Troughton book that I'm re-releasing with three ex- extra chapters um, is at the printers. So uh, that should be released. I'm planning on sort of uh, launching it in uh, Dimensions in Newcastle. So it'll be around about that time. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. This is going to sound... Uh, bit silly but um, when your dad was the doctor and obviously you were there did you two ever meet at all yes we did did. yeah yeah yeah. but i think i've got this wrong right because he came to the studio you came with your brother yeah and i was i I met him in the studio lime grove where we're shooting oh and i remember you two in short trousers yeah 
You were, weren't you? Oh, yeah, we'd be in short trousers, yeah. Or your brother, or his sister. No, 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 I was... Well, no, <laughs> David no, no, no. would never a bit to being in short no, trousers. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, I... Well, I certainly was in short trousers at that point. Yeah. Yeah, because in those days, you did wear short trousers at 12 years old, didn't yeah, you? you? I mean, did. it was that... You, I used to go to school with trousers. I wear them at 70. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I think we, I think we did meet. We met in a pub as well. What? The Orange Tree Pub. Yeah, you don't remember that, do you? Uh, Richmond? Yeah, somewhere like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I was quite How young. How old were you then? Oh, 13, 14. <laughs> what were you doing in pub <laughs> I got a new job. <laughs> <laughs> Stick it on the CV, it'll be fine. <laughs> you see it on the CV. <laughs> Who's got this member of IMDb? Michael, you um, you obviously we know you from lots of things, but then there's a sort of well, not a career gap, but you went off our radar as an audience. Yes, and you took up teaching. And the course yeah, I mean through circumstances that were yeah, through through sort of personal circumstances, my wife contracted a very nasty illness called MS. And essentially, I couldn't go away and, and film, uh, you know. And at that point, it was a shame because, you know, I was getting really nice films and things like that. Um, but, you know, um, I had to stop, really, because of personal things. Uh, and uh, I decided to become a teacher. And I taught, first of all, I taught physics uh, because I'd done a, a university degree in astrophysics. Ooh. And then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Now. And then. And then... In a TARDIS? Um, no, not in a TARDIS, no. Aww. Uh, um, and then I went on to um, teach drama um, as head of drama at Woodbridge School with this fantastic theatre that was it just built for three and a half million or something. So I was playing with that, really, for um, four or five years. And then I stopped and, and became a full-time carer, and now I'm back doing um, proper acting. Yeah, good, yeah. good. Yeah. good. Yeah. Go on, you bastards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Deborah. Yes. Oh. You're at the end now. Yeah. So you're new size of yourself. I'm quite happy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you are, you are, you are, you Anyway, Deborah. What do you want to ask? <laughs> <laughs> of all the shows that of yours that you were that are no longer in existence, is there one in particular that you're hoping will be rediscovered? Is there one your which is your favourite story that you want to see again? Right. Um, my favourite story was Fury from the Deep. My I excellent on that one. It was because uh, Seaweed Monster, one of my favourite monsters actually. You didn't mm. see the monster the first four episodes, I think that's right, Michael, didn't you? Mm. Yes. But you could always hear him. Yeah. When he drew nearer, the there was a heartbeat and it got louder and louder and louder. And this went on and eventually I killed it with my scream. <laughs> I went back into the water where it came from. So I was rather proud of that. <laughs> so I actually, Victoria killed a blooming monster. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> was, that fo- was that the foamy thing? Yeah. Did yeah, they use foam on that? Yeah. It did. No, it did, yeah. yes. Yeah. That foam was horrendous. Yeah. It got everywhere. Yeah. Well, they covered a, a, an airport in here the other day in America. It was, and, and it was somewhere like 15 foot deep and there were helicopters which were completely obliterated. Wow. wow. It, it's, a, it's a foam that you use for, for killing fires. Yeah, smothering oh, yeah. fires. Like yeah. Yeah. We used it years ago when I was an a- actor. Mm. I can remember it. wading through it. Mm. <laughs> it was exactly. awful stuff. Anyway, mm. I, I, I interrupt. Sorry. I think that sounds rather dangerous, actually. Yeah. No, it's nothing at all. What came to you wait it? Yeah, did you, I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Dad doing it. I got lost. Having great laugh. Yeah. 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 You can walk yeah. through it. It's not at all dangerous. You mm. can just get it get up your nose a bit, but don't worry about that. So the answer to that is Fury from the Deep. Which yes. is Fury from the Deep, written by Mr. Pemberton. Yes. If I remember. Mm. It was one of the first stories I had to come into uh, edit on. Way back. Uh, just one final question then. 
And this is a tradition. Oh, oh thank you very much. I don't need it. This is a tradition in our podcast. Or, or, or an old charter. Or something, yeah. yeah. Um, you, you don't have to answer, mm-hmm. okay? But you will look bad if you don't. <laughs> All right? <laughs> what is this? Do you fart in public? <laughs> oh, no, no, nothing like that at okay. all. No. No. It's about um, how television is a constantly <clears throat> shifting landscape these days. Uh, in, let's say, the last five years, things have changed radically in the way people watch TV now they've got... It's all over the internet. Uh, stuff like Netflix are making their own TV shows. Uh, it's just... No one watches TV... It isn't an event to sit down and watch television anymore. People do it whenever they like. And that's in turn changed the way that television has been made. Now it's, it's more made <coughs> to uh, what we call the box set generation, where there's a through arc through every series. So, Netflix. Yeah, you just want to watch one more episode each time one finishes. Uh, given that that's the, tape, the case these days, I just wanted to ask you, is it ever acceptable, do you think, to carpet a bathroom? <laughs> Only if it's got a floor. <laughs> Michael? Yes. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> well, on that Thank you. And I would just like to present each of you with your own official The Paris Project badge. Oh. For being a famous person that we've talked to in public. Thank you. Thank you. I can't be it on because the hands don't work. <laughs> oh, okay. Seriously. So I can throw it away when we get out. No, I think you're my inside part. There we go. Right, so, we're done. So, so, yeah. Yeah, we're done. so thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is that an oh. embarrassing question? Yeah. yeah. That was, oh, oh, we have a question from the audience. Oh, yes. Audience question. I'm just taking the microphone over to the audience. And here it comes. Uh, I have several actually. Um, one I just wanted to uh, ask um, Michael first. Um, the three chapters of the book, will they be released in audio or will you do a, another be released in audio? Cause, um, I'm working on that at the moment actually. Uh, they'd possibly be released um, through um, Amazon um, as a separate add on or we might go back through the, uh, the company that did it before. I'm not quite sure yet. Okay. And I've, do you want another one? I think yeah. he's got one more Sorry. question. Yeah. Yeah. Coming up. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to um, thank, I guess, Michael, because uh, uh, growing up, um, I was introduced to Doctor Who from an early age. Um, for the audio medium, again, yeah. from Pat, uh, him sort of being blind, it was the only medium that yeah. was, I suppose, more accessible. Um, so for me, Pat was my favourite Doctor. Um, oh, thank you. Um, yeah. And the other question I had was to Derek. Um, the, the, the the final scene of the War Games um, has always confused me. What actually happened? Because obviously you, you had him sort of spinning in the void, or a void, and what was the the concept behind that? That's a difficult question. Uh, it was a, a last episode of a ten episode marathon um, and it was a means by which we could uh, get rid of one doctor and find another. And since we were, were having him running away, that's what it was all about. He was running away. As he ran away from the Time Lords at the end of his trial, so to speak, um, he was running away and went into a Whiz, as opposed to sticking him down and superimposing another actor's face over him, which would be the previous uh, method, I believe. And we simply spun him off into space and picked him up when he landed in, in, in uh, England, or any of the countryside or whatever. Um, that was the only reason I can think of that uh, he, we use the spinning in space idea. Because if you remember the opening of the next series of John Pertry's thing, um, he, he was found uh, in a weird wood, um, unconscious, I believe, and that was a result of spinning around and falling out of the sky. And that's the only reason. Right. Okay. Um, I, think, I think, are we, are we good?
good for time or? I think we're out. Kind of question, oh, don't worry. Okay. 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 One more question. Someone always. Oh, oh, I love this. Oh, so I'll be there. Don't speak at once. No, I'll be. I'll be. We're good. We're good. Well, 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 Derek, uh, Michael, and Deborah. Thank you very much. Thank you for putting up with us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your days. You have been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk.